But I was listening in the car to your fantastic uh, Radio 4 series, Annika Has Issues, because you've become a stand-up comedian. We talked about this a little <laughs> bit, but you are now a stand-up comedian. You've done at least two actual full-on stand-up shows. Yeah. And this series yeah. is... is... I, I've been on tour with Lucy Porter <laughs> wow. to Guernsey. Okay, it was just a one venue. <laughs> but I loved being away with Lucy Porter. I, yeah. I mean, we just... Oh, God, I love it. It's so... It's great. I, I mean, it's a bit weird sitting down, isn't it, in yes. a way? You, you've, we could stand up and do this. We can do Especially like. since you're bitter that I've taken your chair. <laughs> I just, yeah. I'm just confused. Yeah. You, can, you can interview me. Yeah. <laughs> no, it started because I did a Radio 4 thing called My Teenage Diary. Has anyone ever listened to that? It's really lovely. You take along your teenage diaries, and mine particularly are <laughs> just mental. And, and I sat here with my diaries, and, you know, the audience was laughing hysterically because they were very funny. And I just... I just sort of really enjoyed that connection with the audience. Yeah. It's really great to go... Hello, how are you? <laughs> you know, how nice to see you all. And so it started from there. I just thought, ah. Oh. So I, I wrote some comedy. Yeah. And Radio 4 have been obligingly um, putting them out and whatever. Well, so. it's very, you know, we get a lot about you. It's, it's a very, it's, it's, you're a perfect uh, stand-up comedian. You're, you're very willing to talk about your life and your personal life. And that's what this show's all about. It's Anna has issues. And so you choose a a subject each week where you have issues about family or death, which is quite interesting. Alzheimer's was an absolute roar of a laugh. <laughs> <laughs> the Alzheimer's one is, is funny. There's, uh, you talk about oh. Captain Dick in the Alzheimer's oh, one. Oh, Captain is... Dick. Oh, my God. Has anyone else had an experience like this? Oh, oh dear. It you sounds know, worse than it is. You know, <laughs> you know those children's parties where you really try and go the extra mile for your child? So I booked Captain Dick. And the idea was that Captain Dick would take my son and his lovely schoolmates round Richmond Park in London um, and take them on jolly japes and, you know, make a fire perhaps and then come back all flushed with excitement and pretty exhausted and I'd have a groaning picnic laid out for them. So that was the premise. So Captain Dick took the class off for jolly japes in the bracken and came back for the picnic, and it was only then that I realised that Adam was missing. So I have a child who is missing in Richmond Park, and this isn't like a municipal park <laughs> where you can see the edges. It's 2,500 acres, <laughs> and there are rutting deer and a lot of lakes, and Adam was missing, and one thing you do not ever want to be is known as the mother who loses children. <laughs> so I had to go and find this child. And um, I did find him eventually sobbing in the bracken. He just had too much of Captain Dick and was just all over it. <laughs> and, and I brought him back to the picnic rug. And I then had one hour to reset Adam's mind. Honestly, it was the biggest challenge I've ever done. One hour before his mum came that I had to persuade him that he'd had the best bloody time at this party ever. So I, I was shaking. My poor son didn't get a look in Edgar. I didn't look at him for the rest of the party. I gave him all Josh's presents. I said, you take your picks. You did so well in the bracken. What would you like? Anyway, and I just, I brainwashed him for a whole hour. And by the time his mum came, Adam had truly had the best party ever. <laughs> and when I helped, and poor my poor son Josh just looked as all his presents were being opened <laughs> by bloody Adam. By the time Adam's mother came, little, uh, uh, little Adam was absolutely thrilled and I helped them into the car. And I said to Adam's mum, oh, he's been a joy. <laughs> what an adventurous little soul he is. And she said... Oh, that's really weird, because usually when he goes to a party, he hides and cries. <laughs> so, But see, you bloody. talk about, you, you reveal that on the right, presumably, I mean, it also obviously was a little while ago, I suppose. But... Yeah, otherwise Captain Dick will be suing. <laughs> well, I can't believe you, you know, you took, A, you took that on yourself rather than, than Captain Dick being in trouble for losing a child, which is... That's the first rule of being a... Yes, well, it was, it was back in the day. You didn't <laughs> ever blame anyone else but yourself. You know, you wear your hair shirt, don't you, as the mother. Yeah. It's your fault if a but, child you know, is... 
Adam's yeah, mum has presumed now heard about this and might then and maybe put two and two together, even if you change the names. I never name. spoke to that family again. <laughs> he never came to another party. And I hate his mother. And poor Josh. <laughs> and poor Josh had no presents. We went home in stony silence. Yeah. But, you know, but yeah. they, you are covering big issues in it. And it oh, but, yeah. but, but you're... I, you know, you're you're such a sympathetic and empathetic person, and you're so interested in all these things. It is that you talk about death, and you've, you're very funny about your what your own plans for what you want for for your oh, own yes. ashes, and the fact yeah. you've got your you've got your parents' ashes as well. You yeah, well, you can do so much now with your body, which is what I've discovered, having <laughs> become a bit of an expert on death. And um, I always remember, um, you know, back in the day, you just had a coffin and it was very boring but now it seems you can just do anything at all carrie fisher the actress when she died she had her coffin in the shape of a prozac pill and i was doing the radio two breakfast show at the time and i did a sort of poll with the audience and the <laughs> audience you know what radio two audiences are like they seized on this subject and by the end i had a list as long as my arm of brilliant options for coffins but I thought for mine, I just wanted to have something blue because I love the colour blue. Everything in my life is coloured blue. And obviously it's got to be sort of long and blue. And I just thought for ages. And then the only thing I could think of that was long and blue is the Challenge Annika truck. <laughs> so this was perfect. And, you know, also what I'm doing when I leave this world, I'm leaving my children with a bit of a challenge because yeah. they've got to create the truck <laughs> and place my body in it. Well, I think it should be yeah. like a, you know, like a Viking burial. It should be the actual truck. The BBC should give you the truck, truck. Or, and you should be buried like in Sutton Who under there, and then in oh. a thousand years' time, someone <laughs> could dig you up and wonder what, what the what, hell what is a queen this you were. small skeleton doing in this <laughs> sodding great truck? <laughs> no, well, you you know you. Um, the thing about all these subjects with, with my Annika Has Issues series is that, you know, they're bittersweet, all these things. You know, yeah. death is bittersweet, isn't it? Yes. And, you know, it all started off with my thoughts about this was when... Actually, it's the same son, Josh. I do have three sons, but Josh seems to be my favourite tonight. <laughs> <laughs> when he was little and you'd, you'd ask him what he wanted to be when he grew up, you know, you'd say, what would you like to do? You know, would you like to be an astronaut or whatever? And he'd always get really excited about options. He was only three. And then one day he said, no, I want to go to the office because he saw me leaving in the morning to go to an office full of joy because I couldn't wait to get out of the door. <laughs> and so he said, I want to go to the office. And then he just said these few words, but will I know the way? And when you're three, you panic about things yeah. like that. Where is the office? What happens when you go out of the front door? It's really... Sorry, I'm quite choked up. It's really scary out there for a small child yeah. to think of knowing the way. And that's how the whole death stand-up yeah. started, about how we're desperately trying to find our way, aren't we, basically? Yeah. Have you found yours? Um, I mean, you're upset that we've even swapped chairs. Yeah, you know, so I, you're... I, 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 was I was fine when I was on that side of the stage, but now... You've lost I'm your not, way. I'm not sure. <laughs> we need Josh saying, but will you know the way? 